Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. I have finally finished The Lost of Palace of Ice and can provide you with a full review of the game. This DLC is a direct continuation of Solasta, Crown of the Magister, and consequently, I use that game as a point of reference while going over many of the points in this review. Let's jump right in, starting with what I like. There are four major callouts I had in my review of Crown of the Magister that I think this DLC does a good job of addressing. First, I dislike the lack of ancestry options and specifically mentioned Dragonborn as one I wanted to have. Since that time, Dragonborn has been added and this DLC adds gnomes and tieflings as well. Of course, as a player, I always want more, but I think Tactical Adventures has done a good job of adding more ancestries into the game and giving them mechanics that allow players to select them without feeling weak compared to other options. Another big complaint I had with Crown of the Magister and to a lesser degree Lost Valley was the writing, and this is another area where I believe Palace of Ice is significantly better. First and foremost, there's nobody you are doing tasks for that comes off as a completely incompetent idiot. The banter between party members is also significantly less cringeworthy. For the most part, the story makes sense and is easy to follow. Mind you, none of it is mind-blowing, and you won't mistake this for Mass Effect 5, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. There is one caveat to this positive point that we'll talk about in the dislike section. The third complaint I had was regarding Crown of the Magister's ending, which was a deeply unsatisfying cliffhanger. The ending for Palace of Ice is almost a complete 180, providing you with a very challenging sequence to overcome, and then a series of scenes that review the impacts from all the choices you have made in the game. Very nicely done, and it felt like a fitting end to the series. The last call out was about how Solasta handles followers. In Crown of the Magister, there were long sections of the game where you were forced to have a companion for a particular quest. If that companion died, it was game over for you, and it was irritating trying to handle side quests or general exploration while also babysitting a character who was significantly significantly less powerful than the rest of your group. You are still given a lot of followers in Palace of Ice, but they join you for shorter stretches of time, and oftentimes the side quests either involve them or don't require you to go to another place on the map. Like the last point, there's a caveat to this we'll talk about in the dislike section, but overall, I think the follower system is much less intrusive than it was in the base game. Pilots of Ice also continues Solasa's run of providing 20-hour campaigns that have a fantastic variety of enemies and locations. I don't want to spoil anything for you, so I won't talk about them here, but there's a great diversity in your foes and their defenses. I do feel like you fight Sorax a little too often, but overall it's great not knowing at any given time who you will face. The last thing I really like about this DLC is it's constructed in a way that allows you to take full advantage of the increased level cap. Palace of Ice is a level 10 through 16 campaign. This is four levels above what you had access to before, and consequently, new spells and features have been added to most of the classes. If you have finished Crown of the Magister, then you can import that squad of characters and your decisions transfer over as well. I didn't have my save game from completing the original campaign, so I cannot speak to how much reactivity there is regarding your original decisions. We'll circle back to why I don't have a save in the dislike section. To get around this issue, I created a custom group of four characters for the campaign. The game allows you to do this as long as a squad is at least level 10, but no higher than level 12. In Crown of the Magister, many of your quests were massive dungeon crawls with one or two long rests at most, forcing you to conservatively use abilities until it was absolutely clear you were facing the final boss. The majority of Palace of Ice works in the exact opposite way. Most of the time you enter an area, there's one or two fights, and then you have access to another long rest if you need it. This means not only do you have access to new high level spells and abilities, but you can also go crazy with them for the vast majority of the game. Your enemies are also more capable than they were in the base game, and while I could be wrong, it definitely felt like there were many more legendary foes than I faced in the previous campaigns. I know some of you prefer the long dungeon and crawls where you are on your last leg by the end but personally I love this setup and it made figuring out the class mechanics even more rewarding and fun. There are a couple of things about this game that I am neutral on. A complaint I had regarding Crown of the Magister is that it seemed like there weren't enough accessories and unique weapons to properly equip all of your characters. Palace of Ice takes just about everything you could get in the base campaign and then adds on several more options, which certainly helps to address that problem. Unfortunately, this also creates a situation where there's a massive amount of loot to manage throughout the campaign. The reason this is a problem is that the inventory management system is unchanged 
options and continues to be less than adequate. Your only option in the interface is to arrange all objects according to type. You cannot filter the list based on type or rearrange them based on other factors such as weight or price. This was an annoyance in Crown of the Magister that is compounded in Palace of Ice. At the end of the day, I still prefer having more accessory options so I put this in the neutral section. The other point I am neutral on is the amount of choice within the DLC. The base game had a couple of choices you could make during quests, but none of them felt particularly impactful. Palace of Ice gives you more choice options and the DLC has multiple endings, giving those choices a little bit more weight when the journey ends. I put this in the neutral section because for the most part, none of these choices feel particularly meaningful while you are playing the game. I deeply enjoy endings that take your decisions into account and consequently seeing how my choices impacted the ending was satisfying, but I think a better job should have been done of sprinkling in more consequences or rewards based on your decisions during the actual campaign. Quick note before we get into what I disliked about the DLC. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate you hitting the like button. This information lets me know which videos the community is enjoying. If you want to support this kind of content, please consider becoming a member of the channel where you will get access to full playthrough episodes. All right, I mentioned before that there was a caveat to the writing being better. The caveat is that the lore and world building continues to be wholly uninteresting, and that makes it much harder for the writing to grab me. This is a pretty big issue in Crown of the Magister, and I don't think it's something that a DLC can fix. Across three campaigns, I have spent 60 hours in this world, and I Honestly, there's very little about how it works that I have retained. This is absolutely an area tactical adventures will have to focus on for their Solasta sequel. The next caveat is regarding how much smoother the follower system is this time around. A big part of why it's so much easier to deal with is that this DLC is extremely linear, so you are almost always focusing on the main mission the follower is there for. Honestly, the first half of the game feels like it's on rails. The second half has you figuring out how to locate the leaders of five different clans who are all in different places. This gives the impression that you can go back and forth between the quests and complete them at your leisure, but that's actually not the case. The game forces you to find one leader, return back to home base to hear an unnecessary conversation, and then you are allowed to pursue one more lead. So honestly, there's never a time when you can just freely explore the map and do whatever you want. Finally, the last issue isn't directly about Palace of Ice, and I might have mentioned it in the base game review, but it's irritating all over again, so we'll talk about it again. I hate when games force you to have limited saves. In 60 hours worth of playtime, there have been fantastic fights and moments that would be great to come back to. The limited amount of saves forces me to delete old saves for moments I wanted to keep just to make room for new things I am doing. Between playing Lost Valley and replaying Summer Crown of the Magister, I wiped out the majority of my old saves and couldn't import the original campaign. I see many indie games that allow you unlimited saves, so honestly, I don't understand why all games, especially CRPGs, don't allow you to do this. That wraps up my review of the Palace of Ice DLC. A solid 20 hour campaign and new ancestries make this a fantastic pickup for any Solasta fans. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. Take care.